Next one, darkness to brightness. Just now I explained already. By knowing that we are facing all these problems and difficulties, but not everything, remember. Another warning given by the Buddha, not to think all our unpleasant or pleasant experience are due to our previous karma, not all. We are experiencing lot of pleasant and unpleasant feeling due to various other reasons and factors. So when we neglect our duties and responsibilities, we have to suffer. Our previous karma has nothing to do with it. When we waste our income, whatever we have, we have to suffer. Our previous karma has nothing to do with this. If we act foolishly, without thinking properly, we get into trouble. Nothing to do with previous, previous karma. If we associate with bad companions, when they influence us to commit evil and bad things like drug addicts and what you call drunkards and gangsters, nothing to do with previous karma present. So we must know how to adjust our way of life by using our human mind. Then the life cannot become miserable. So don't blame to our karma alone. Again, certain karmas that we have uh, created or generated within this lifetime also we experience the good and bad effect. You have already learned certain karmas, good and bad, can create the effect only within this life, while we are living here. After that, no. Certain karmas. And certain karmas create the effect not within this life, but hereafter, immediately after our death, when the next life come into existence, the effects can be seen there, only in that particular life. If not, if certain other karmas obstruct the functioning of such karmas, these karmas also evaporate, disappear. No effect. These karmas are known as ahosi. Ahosi karma. Ahosi karma means the karma which cannot create effect. You operate. That means all our good and bad karmas cannot create effect. Certain other karmas obstruct. Good one or bad one. Then they disappear. Another group, the effects or the karmic results of our action follow us. Just like our shadow. Life after life, there is no end, there is no limit, unless we experience the good and bad effect. If not, until we attain sainthood, arahanta or Buddha, even after attaining arahantahood or the Buddhahood also, within that lifetime, certain karmic effects they have to experience, good and bad both. Only after they are dead, after attaining Nibbana, they will be free from their karmic I see the nature of karma. So, we have to handle this life very carefully by knowing how the life exists, function, and how life process proceed, and how changes take place how life can become miserable or very fortunate. Then who is responsible for that? External forces, the God, the angels, devils, the Buddhas, have nothing to do with it. The Buddhas can guide us and advise us how to handle our life without abusing and misusing. So if we are not ready to listen to them, 
if we are lazy and crazy to abuse this human life, the Buddhas cannot do anything for us. The God cannot do anything for us. We have a wonderful mind, human mind. But this mind is completely polluted, cannot use properly. So when you learn, when you think, when understanding appears, then you come to know how to adjust your way of life. So, from darkness to brightness, by knowing our weaknesses, what we have committed, then try to mold our next life. By knowing that we have created some bad karma, then we try to create more and more good karma. We try to reduce evil forces from our mind, try to reduce our anger reduce our jealousy, reduce our intolerance, reduce our hatred, reduce our selfishness, then do some meritorious deeds. Now you are molding your next life. After that, next life cannot become miserable. So you never go from darkness to darkness again. So from here you go from darkness to brightness. Life becomes fortunate. So here, although we have committed certain evil deeds or bad karma, but still it is not too late for us to adjust our way of life to overcome and to find out a solution how to promote, how to develop our way of life, but it depends on our effort. But usual method or the belief that people maintain, when we pray and worship or do some offerings to God, we can get rid of the bad effect. This belief was rejected by the Buddha. So that is not the Buddhist idea. You can worship, no harm. You can pray, very good. It is a meditation. The time that you spend for worshipping and praying, we can regard as meditation. No one can say it is bad. But it is impossible for you to get rid of the bad effect, the bad deeds that you have done. The method introduced by the Buddha is, by knowing that you have done certain bad deed from that day onward, try to do more and more good deeds, reduce bad deeds, try to train your mind. Now which is more effective, which is more reasonable and meaningful? 